Pino Black, folks, and we're going to see how recent this photo is. Uh, four impressions from out in space, more than likely SOHO or our satellites, it doesn't really matter. We don't ask the government what the name of our satellites are and stuff like that. We just like the naked little pictures with all the clothes off. Okay, now check this out. Right there in the, just like if you're looking through your gun scope, and I'm sure everybody's had good hunting season so far for deer and everything like that, but check out what I got in my scope. Earth, right there in the hatch. Okay, so the idea that the objects, the red dots that you're seeing, or basically the star clusters that are showing up down on, check the V action out there to the lower left quarter at about, what, 7 o'clock, 7, 8 o'clock. There's some V action right below Earth, there's V action, because more than likely Earth is right there, okay. Either that or the sun is directly there is what we look at and, you know, and we know there's a lot more than Milky Way galaxy that we're in and we're, a lot of stuff is melding. Check the big ass planet or star or asteroid belt that's right above us with a big ass planet that's right above us. Now, the meatballs and the idea that if you go and watch the movie Space Cowboys and they get out of the planet, out of the... You know, it's all movies, it's all acting and stuff. But they get out and they make the comment of the idea of the meatball. We don't talk about that. Well, that possibly could be the meatball right there. The idea that what is at our back door in the dark, Neptune and your anus. Your anus, yes. So, and the idea that if you go to World Wild Telescope, like Bino Black has told you, I was peeking around in there, and the idea that there are some suns that nobody's kind of, because we got a little glimpse, because all that big dark stuff got out of the way. So go to Worldwide Telescope and do some research up behind Neptune and, and uh, Uranus. And uh, you'll see some suns that, or some damn bright something up there that we've ended up discovering. That stuff's hell the way out. Now I'm going to zoom out. We got it at 400%. We don't need to get any bigger because this isn't going to give us any, uh, like we get when we're looking at Soho or something like that. We'll zoom out, get to 100%, and there you go. So the idea that this was selected up on November 22nd. So basically, this is, uh, let me see, what do we got for clock time on UTC? So the idea that they are basically going to present this on the 22nd, because right now it is the 21st, at, and it is 12.10 p.m. Central Time, and 18 is something, it's 18.10 UTC Zulu time. So it's not even the 22nd yet. So they're going to present this to somebody. November 22nd. So there's going to be a meeting of the mind somewhere, ladies and gentlemen, because this is minor planet. Sorry about busting, but this is U.S. tax dollars uh, and other countries, I'm sure, you know. So, And there's a UTC clock running of 2120 uh, on the 22nd. So maybe they dated wrong, but I'm not positive sure about that. So then basically there's some kind of, uh, uh, I wouldn't say it's a glitch. I would say NEO has a clock and you can see it running right there 2 11 11 22 and today is the 21st and the idea that they are have a conglomerate clock somewhere probably with the space lab or something like that of uh keeping an eye on these objects a little bit he uh, more ahead of utc zulu time because if i just bring up that and i can go ahead and bring up my earthquake and i'll show you the Let's go ahead and show you the earthquake that was in uh, Arkansas. And this here stuff that I'm popping through is what I'm going to show you in a second. So the idea that, there you go, 2.9 Arkansas. I got the earth rotating the right way, and then I'll hit now. Refresh our clock. And I get 1811 GMT Zulu So on the 21st. So it's not, being it's uh, the 21st right now, it's not. You know, it's only six hour difference, I believe, unless I'm all screwed up on this clock stuff. Is there that damn much difference between here and... No, there's not, because they can get there in eight hours. Something like that, I don't know. Supersonic plane on SR-71 Blackbird or something like that, like an hour and three minutes or something like that and that baby. So, also the idea that a friend showed me and the idea you might have seen something in Central Cal... Or somewhere in California, someone sent a, a video of being able to see, you know, a red, blue, and white... More than likely, that could be an obs. We do have a fleet, folks, again, once again. And the idea that when the government tells you we have one hot air balloon, well, whatever. We've got a fleet, again, of hot air balloons. And the idea that for emergency purposes, if we ever, they would basically, just like a cop, they would just basically take every hot, I mean, every, you know, Goodyear blimp, every advertising blimp in the country if they needed it. So the idea that when you see a red, blue, and white flashing in the sky that close and that clear to be able to get it on a camera. Now, don't get me wrong, 
There are star clusters anomalies that way out in space that do flash like that. They change color from like red, blue, green or something like that, but not red, blue, and white. So the idea, and yeah, we're seeing those colors up there at, uh, uh, so this is a basically, if you sit there and look there, uh, November 22nd, that's where they're looking, and then the idea that maybe this is the progression clock, they figured that, okay, that's where this stuff is going to be at, at that time. So that could be the scenario on that clock that we're seeing down right there, okay? So, so as we go to 400%, that's probably what will be going on projected ahead on the movement and then the idea that I would probably foresee that the idea that when you see the red planets and see that's the progression of what's going on that the idea that that's how much action the rising and falling of the stars in the super giants do so yeah this is a projection out of the red dots will be super giants massive sun stars that are like 74, I think, what is it, up to 70, I know at least 74 times the size of the sun, and then we have close by us at like half the distance of the sun, uh, a sun that's 59% of the sun, our sun, that's normally in the Milky Way, and we know that Rigel Kentaurus, K-E-N-T-U-A-R-S, U-R-S, something like that, I think, if I'm spelling it right, B, right? Well, Taurus B is in front of the sun. So the idea that more than likely, since it's in front of the sun and it's the closest thing, this would more than likely be like that one that's 59%. Uh, Rigel Cantaris B is like 77% of the sun. So the idea that I would say more than likely that's it here. And then this is going through in the projection. And that's how the supergiants come in, that big red wing up there. So the idea that if you figure the sun's in the center and I'm wrong about where the earth's at, it doesn't matter. We are in line with the sun because the sun hits us every day, folks. Okay? So the idea that there's something to go figure and ponder of the idea that what's in the crosshairs? Is that crosshair earth or are we pretty, pretty damn close to it? So the idea that that is probably our little sun that we end up in. It's not little because more than likely it's 55% of the sun size. And it's coming up in Hawaii at, and that would make sense, wouldn't it, folks? Yeah, that's popping in at Hawaii at like 1 UTC time uh, to 3 UTC time and also coming up and being able to give a shadow these objects more than likely below and that was more than likely the object that's above us uh, find out what planet that is and is that Jupiter it could possibly be Jupiter I don't know so go play around with this stuff uh, minor planet center has that most of the nuts should be able to get that uh, I don't like to have the, and then this is basically what is projected for November 22nd tomorrow at, doesn't say what time, just like basically I suppose what the cluster would probably be stationary at the most time. So this asteroid belt that everybody, you know, NASA had that Thursday meeting and said, oh, there's nothing close to Earth. Well, we're closer to stuff in our transition through the Milky Way and other galaxies and melding with other galaxies and, uh, yeah, so there you go. Uh, don't believe the government when they talk to you. And usually, usually anybody that's been in the U.S. military before in the past, and whatever, stuff like that, they kind of, they'll give you a little nod. It's like, whatever, believe whatever you want to believe. So there you go. Uh, and there's, there's this progression clock at like on the 22nd. And I would figure that that's the hour that's flopping around there. Yep, 22nd on the 23rd hour, and then 22nd on the 5th hour eighth hour and then the, you just get to see what's going on so the idea it looks like a lot of stuff clears out at that about time let me reduce it down a little bit and you can, might be able to get a better we'll get a better look what's going on i tried to get uh there you go and then so i guess the uh, last, last few minutes here we're going to pop into the what the jpl stuff and the closest objects that are supposed to be around so there you go watching that clock if i can get it to come back down and so we've got some damn good uh and can you imagine what NASA looks at, you know, besides this? So pretty wild. There is the universes, folks. And we mail. There is the supergiants, more than likely. And the idea that the sun is in the supergiants. So basically this could be Alaraf and stuff out here. And Earth is down here somewhere. And the sun's up there in the crosshairs, okay? So 
there's your clock down there. What it's going to be the 23rd hour tonight, and then uh, 22 uh, the eighth hour, eleventh hour tomorrow, UTC time, Zulu time, because right now it is the little clock will come up there, and it's it's about maybe another 20 minutes ahead of that or something. Or no, it's 18 actually right now. So it's 18 18 UTC time right now. So there you go. They know what's going on. Now you somewhat know what's going on. Let's give you some JPL action. So this is current constellation and stuff, south and everything like that, moon and everything. So the idea that you'll have pretty much about the same ball of wax tomorrow at uh, the idea that we should have a heck of a show on our nighttime views because the idea that the, these close objects give you the closest thing tomorrow and the idea this is the time and to be close to the earth and close to the moon. That's uh, military time and UTC, okay? And then you can read this data here, and it'll show you. And you can also go to it on JPL and the closest Earth moid they're showing there. And they're looking at it a lot. They've seen this on the 19th. And condition 8. You can see the condition 8 right there. And then this is 2011 WP4. And there's NASA. You can go ahead and go pull that up in JPL. Let's go to the other one. Okay, 2011 Q WQ4, and the idea that you can take a look at this tonight, more than likely, uh, get outside and take a look, because the idea that this is going to come around at, uh, it was close to us on February, and then the idea that on the, on 2007, tonight, it'll get close to the Earth at 2253, so just about before 11 o'clock UTC time, take six hours off of that, I was figuring that that must be something about uh, a little bit before 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. And so the idea of the East Coast wise, uh, Tullahoma and so forth should be able to more than likely, we'll be able to get that, we should be able to see this puppy on uh, Fireball tomorrow or late tonight. It just depends on how fast they load that stuff up. And it's six, condition six. And there you go with it's got some pretty darn close. Uh, but the other one, like I was saying, if you look at the IU, the one on the 24th, the one I just showed you, I'm not going to misquote. So there you go, this one tonight. And then the idea that it gets close to the moon about noon tomorrow or something like that. Because that UTC time, or no, 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 that would be nighttime. So the idea that you should be able to see that just before six, six hours UTC would be, and so we're going to get some, we should get views of this at six hours off that, that's like uh, two o'clock our time, it's Eastern. So the idea, we should get views of this stuff on Fireball Network. All right, so let's go take a look at what, Tonight, this would clear out, so let me put in a time, a solution time for tonight and see what we got in the sky tonight, okay? Because this is basically right now 12.21 p.m. Central Standard Time, okay? So other places in the world to the west tonight would have a heart, heck of a good show because they're going to end up seeing, uh, yeah, because this stuff moves to the west. So the idea that you would see Leononis, you know, Lioness, basically looks like a swan, but the Mars is up there by that, and I know i got all everything else behind here, got time, got to worry about all right, there's current distance of Earth from the sun, and we'll click that real fast and then realize the idea that the moon is in the daylight time for us in North America right now. Okay, our IU current distance, and there's the miles, and the idea that with that, there's our largest distance ever and our nearest distance ever of orbit to center. So the idea that we are getting closer. 21.83 million miles. So we're getting closer. We're only a little bit off, off of getting to the all-time closest. Because we're there right now. Okay, I'm not, I don't have a constellation. I'm not going to waste my time. Jupiter's up on our ass end tonight at 6 p.m. As you can see, Central Standard Time. So the idea that depending on where it comes, if it comes on the inside, we'll end up having Mars, Venus, and Mercury. Okay, the closeness of this, of you know, the sun will be out of our view at nighttime, as you see, it doesn't show up there. So at 6 p.m. tonight, the idea that that's the stuff that would be, you know, if we figure we're North America and the sun's over there going down in the west, the idea that that's what would be in our nighttime sky and Jupiter would be back up to the east. Don't know if we'll be able to see it or not, but the idea that though that's what, we should have some pretty good clear sky tonight for to be able to see those close JPL objects. Because this is tonight's, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, okay? And then that would probably be pretty darn close tomorrow, too, of the objects. And also on the 24th. Even though Antarctica is very active, a little calm for right now.
Oh, this is the closest legal disclaimer.